Guys, what's going on? Uh, guys, I've been asked, how do I see a Gennady Golovkin and Andre fight going if that fight was to happen um, next or if that they were to fight? Uh, I've been asked on Insta, so I thought I'd break it down on how I see that fight playing out. Um, I think I think it's a fight, firstly, I, like I said in the previous video, when I said is Gennady and Charlo ducking um, Andre. It's a fight that I want to see, and it's a fight that really should be made. Let, let's be honest with you. Um, it's a unification fight. Both guys are on the same network. I think Andre Charlo is very difficult to make because Andre and Charlo are on two different networks, and I'm not sure how big the fight is. I'm not sure how interested PBC are in making that fight. Uh, they probably think that there's fights elsewhere that they can make. Um, but that fight between Andre and... Uh, Golovkin is one hopefully if, if Golovkin does fight Morata after that if he does fight Andre how would I see the fight playing out let's let's break down both fighters Triple G very powerful fighter very good jab um he cuts off the ring very well has serious power great body shots uh, has the kind of power where if he hits you flush on the chin it could be night night um, he also, for me, one of the best pressure fighters in the game, you know, the way he cuts off the ring, uh, he's not quite got the feet that he once had, but they're still good enough and still, he's still very dangerous with that pressure and he's very aggressive with it and it's very effective pressure. It's not, a, it's not wild aggression. It's not wild pressure where he's just walking you down, chasing you around the ring wildly. He's very educated pressure. He's very educated in how he moves his feet and how he cuts off the ring. He also gives you no exit. So he traps you and gives you no exit so you can't get out. This is why when people say he's flat-footed and you can avoid him, he cuts off all the angles. He puts you in a position where you've got nowhere to go. And then he's nailing you with hard shots to the body, hard shots to the arms. He doesn't care where they're landing. But he's slowing you down because his punches are so hard and he, and he saps you. And he doesn't just drain you physically, but he drains you mentally. So when the shots are landing, of course, he's draining you physically because he's putting a hurting on you. But, but on top of that, he's also draining you mentally because he's got such a great chin. That's another, that's another thing about Golovkin, great chin. He drains you. So he's right in front of you and you're, you're, getting, you're getting demotivated because you can't... You can't you can't get this guy away, you know, because he just keeps walking forward. He, he doesn't care about your power. He continues to keep walking forward. The only time I've seen Golovkin wary of a p opponent is probably against Canelo. Maybe Jacobs. He gave Jacobs a little respect as well. But apart from that, I haven't really seen him give any opponent a lot of, a lot of uh, respect. He just walks them down. Uh, and at times he takes a lot of shots. Um, yeah, defensively not the most sound guy where he gets caught with shots but he's got an incredible chin so that makes up for any defensive like he's never been down and he's taken some and he's taken some big big shots of big guys strong guys big powerful guys and they don't they, they've never hurt him they've never come close to hurting him the only time i've seen him possibly hurt is against dervy and chenko and that was to the body and i don't know how much i don't i don't even know how much he was hurt there to be honest with you you know, that's a Golovkin type of hurt where, you know, where it's because we hardly see him even flinch. We saw him flinch and we think he's hurt. But for, a, for, an, for another fighter, we'd be saying, oh, he wasn't hurt there. Because most fighters, we've seen him either dropped or we've seen him hurt. We've seen him, you know, whereas Golovkin, any kind of flinch, we always hurt. Because he's, we're literally looking for the weakness. We're looking for him getting hurt because he, we've never seen him before. We've never seen him hurt as an amateur. We've never seen him hurt as a pro. So this is a very, very hard man. This is a guy that's an iron man. You, I think that's the probably correct word for him, an iron man. Right? He's an iron man. You know, you can't hurt this guy. You know, so you're going to go 12 rounds with him. Either, the, only, the only way... This guy gets stopped as if like his age catches up and he he runs out of stamina or you know his punch resistance diminishes, which I don't think so. I think the only way you're gonna get him is if he, like as he gets older he just runs out of gas 
and he can, can't go the distance, which I, again, I, I, I doubt it because generally when Golovkin's fighting, he's the one that's controlling the pace. He's the one that's controlling how the fight is playing out. He's the one that's controlling the pace of the fight. If you look at majority of the times when Golovkin fights, the fight's being played at his pace. And I've never really seen him even get tired, maybe against Davianchenko, where it wasn't a very impressive performance. Now, let's come on to Andrade. Andrade is a very slick fighter. Andrade has got very fast combinations. He's very, very fast. He's got great movement. He's, sl he's a slick fighter, don't get me wrong. Uh, he's got good head movement. Um... So before I go on to Andre, sorry, Golovkin's weaknesses are he gets hit a lot. You know, so he gets hit a lot. That's the only real weakness I see in Golovkin. Apart from that, how people say he's flat-footed, I don't think so. I think he's very educated with his feet. But Golovkin doesn't move his head and he gets hit a lot. You know, and that obviously is, a, is definitely a weakness because you, you, you can hit him. There's no doubt about it. You can, you can get to Golovkin and you can hit him. It's just that, like I said, his chin makes up for that weakness, though. So let's go back on to, uh, although I did mention that prior, but let, let me go back on to Andre. Andre's a very slick fighter. He's very fast. He's very quick with his feet. He's got very fast hands. He's got great lateral movement. These are some of the, these are some of the uh, pros that Andre has. However, the weaknesses... Right. And, the, and for me, the weakness is there's still a question mark. And the question mark is, I don't know. I'll tell you why, because he hasn't really fought the level of competition where we can really judge this. And resumes, as you guys know, I'm very high on resume. Resume is very important for a fighter, because if you're fighting lower level guys, then how can we judge how good you are? But coming on to Andre. Andre's weaknesses for me are there's question marks around his stamina. If somebody like Golovkin would put pressure on, on Andrade and constantly for 12 rounds, how would he respond to that? There's question marks. Can he go in the ring and take a big punch from someone like Golovkin? There's a question mark around his chin. There's a question mark, like I said, stamina. Can he keep it up for 12 rounds? Can he keep what he does in the first three or four rounds for 12 rounds? Because for the first three, four rounds, he looks like a world beater. And then after that, he slows down and looks more vulnerable, as we saw with Liam Williams. So these are very, very important things that for me right now on Andre's name, his attributes, there's question marks there. There's question marks there. There's question marks whether... He would be able to be successful against Golovkin because we haven't seen it against an elite fighter. We haven't seen those attributes being tested against an elite fighter. Chin and stamina. Yeah, he's got great movement. I mentioned this strength. Great movement. Great hand speed. Great feet. But what about the chin? What about the stamina against someone like Golovkin in there? We haven't seen that yet. So, like I said, there's question marks around it, around those for me. And then going off his last fight against Williams, he had a lot of issues. So, when you think about it, if you're having issues against Williams, you're definitely going to have issues against Golovkin. Because Golovkin's going to apply a similar kind of pressure but more educated pressure, and he's a bigger puncher by miles than Williams. He has the kind of punch that can wipe Andre out. He's has the kind of punch that can really hurt him. He has the kind of punch that could knock Andre out cold. Now, coming to the fight, for me, and I've said this before, I believe Golovkin would stop. Andre, even at this point in his career, I believe Golovkin would stop him. Yes, I believe Golovkin would stop him. Going off their recent performances, and yes, Golovkin's not the same fighter, but I don't know whether Andre is, is... Firstly, we don't even know if Andre was ever that great, right? Secondly, is Andre on the decline anyway? So Andre might be on the decline, and we don't know how great Andre really was, because let's be honest, he hadn't really been tested. 
against an elite fighter. He hasn't, his resume is poor. He hasn't really been tested by somebody that's going to put him under pressure, that's going to cause him a lot of issues. He hasn't really been put under that serious test. So like I said, there's serious question marks around Andrade's name. You know, I've seen Golovkin in with Canelo. I've seen Golovkin should have got a decision against Canelo the first time and never got it. I've seen that. But I've not seen Andrade compete at that kind of level. So whatever we say about Andrade is all speculating. Yeah, he's got great skills. Yeah, he's got great attributes. But at the end of the day, we need to see it against somebody that is elite level as well. We need to see it against a world-class fighter. Has Andrade even fought a world-class fighter yet? It's debatable. Actually, I don't even know if it's debatable. Because who is Andrade? What's his best win? I don't know. What's Andrade's best win? Selecki? Or is it... I, I, I generally don't know. I generally don't know. So... To be honest with you... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether... He's going to be able to cope with someone like Golovkin. And it's, 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 it, you're going to have that doubt about somebody that's not proven. Like, Andre's 33 years of age. And this is a guy that's been spoken about for about eight years now. I remember when he fought Brian Rose. That was ages ago. And we're still talking about him not fighting top-level opposition. You know, we're still talking about him the same way as we would talk about somebody... That's a prospect. And this guy is long gone past those prospects days. Think about it. When Andre was at the top or when Andre was a world champion, I don't even know at 154, I don't even know if Josh Taylor had turned pro. I, I, I'm being serious. When, when Andre fought uh, Brian Rose, I don't, and I think he was world champion then. I don't even think Josh Taylor was pro. I will 100% know he wasn't pro. Josh Taylor's come into the, into boxing, become a pro, right? And he's an undisputed champion. In in no time. And Golovkin, I mean, sorry, and Andre is still looking for that marquee fight. And I, listen, I I hope Andre gets that marquee fight. I really, I know some of you are leaving. You know, some of you don't like Andre. I want to see Andre get his marquee because then we know. Because right now, all you guys are saying some of the stuff you're saying because, firstly, you haven't seen him fight. And some of you are Canelo fans and, and, and Andre's obviously said a few things about Canelo. But the fact of the matter is we as boxing fans, because we're boxing fans, we need to see how good Demetrius Andre is. We're right now, we're in a confusion. I'm in a confusion. Right, Demetrius Andre reminds me a little bit about Kell Brook. Kell Brook, Kell Brook spent most of his career fighting lower level competition, right? For majority of his career. He finally eventually stepped up against Porter and managed to win. But after that, he went back to fighting lower level competition again. And then... He stepped up against Golovkin and we know the rest was history. Then he fought Spence and Crawford. But now when you look back at Kell Brook's career, you think and think, well, what did he do? He beat Sean Porter, but that's it. At world-class level. And, and, and at least Kell Brook beat Sean Porter, who was a world-class fighter. Andre's yet to beat anybody of that level. He's not even for anybody at that level. And he's getting older. In terms of the fight... In terms of this fight, I, I would favour Golovkin by stoppage because I know a lot more about Golovkin. Golovkin's a lot more proven to me and I'm going to go and choose the proven fighter rather than choose somebody that I don't even know how good he is. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how good Demetrius Andrade is. It's all speculation because he hasn't fought the top level guys. Let's be honest, you can't tell me how good Demetrius Andrade is because it's all speculation on how good he is. Until he fights someone like Golovkin or fights... A top fighter, we can't really speculate about how good he is. Yes, Liam Williams was probably his best winner, step in the right direction. But Liam Smith, who, who Christian said has got no skills, beat, stopped Liam Williams. 
Liam Smith, the guy that Christian said had no skills, stopped Liam Williams. This is a guy that Christian said had no skills and he stopped Liam Williams. And, and I would say put in a better performance than Andre. So at the end of the day, I think Andre, hopefully these Golovkin fights happen. But if it does happen, just say in the next six months to a year, because let's not forget Golovkin's getting to that same stage as where Pacquiao was at. Father time round the corner for him. So we have to take it on a fight to fight basis with Golovkin like we were doing with Manny Pacquiao. But if it was to happen in the next six months to a year, I still favour Golovkin by stoppage. What do you guys think? Let me know who you think would win if they were to fight right now. Leave your thoughts, guys. Let me know what you're thinking. Guys, remember to please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.